change your life. Welcome into another edition of Running with James. Today we are doing a shoe review and it is a different kind of shoe. It's a new shoe, maybe something if you're a serious runner you've maybe never heard of before. If you're uh, maybe a walker or maybe you've you know, been in the, the, the service industry, maybe you have heard of it before. But today we are talking about the MBT Hurricane. And this shoe is new to market, just recently came out. Um, and it is very different. Now, well, I've learned actually, and I didn't realize this, didn't know this, that MBT actually is the innovator, the originator of the rocker, right? We're seeing that rocker style on a lot of the shoes we see nowadays. Um, and so they came out with this, you know, many, many years ago. Um, and they're saying that, you know, they're the ones that inspired all these great rockers. So today we're going to jump into this shoe, talk about the ins and the outs, what we like, what we dislike about it. Then we're also going to visit a little bit with Chris. Um, he's our model for the day. So enjoy as we talk about the MBT Hurricane. All right, so as usual, we're going to start with the upper, work our way to the midsole and the outsole, and just talk about all the different ins and outs of the shoe. So to start out with, this, uh, the MBT Hurricane has a jacquard mesh upper, um, so it's an engineered upper, um, very limited on the seams. I don't really see a ton of seams in this, so that means limited hot spots. Um, the toe box has ample room for your toes. In fact, for a shoe of this nature, I found that it had more than enough room in the toe box. Very wide. Um, has a toe cap on the end to help protect that shoe uh, from kind of wear and tear. Um, has a very padded collar and padded heel. Um, and what they're calling their X heel counter, right? So it's an, uh, you can see there's like a plastic piece that, go, piece that goes around the heel um, that adds more stability um, to the heel. So um, I will tell you probably my bet, the favorite thing about this shoe is the upper. I did find the upper was pretty comfortable, um, had plenty of room in the toe box for my little piggies to splay. Um, and you know, now it's winter time. Uh, so uh, I, I, I don't know as far as like, you know, how hot is this shoe going to be, but I will say that when I've ran it in some of the colder temperatures, my piggies got cold. So that means it, it breathes pretty well. Um, so I would think that even in the hotter temperatures, even as thick as this material is, it does breathe extremely, extremely well. Um, it has an attached tongue, so it's not a booty, but it is attached. Um, so I always like to prefer an attached tongue, so good job on that, MBT. Um, and it's extremely padded tongue. So didn't have any problems with the tongue slipping, um, was able to get my foot in really well, um, and found for the most part across the top of my foot, I was able to get a pretty locked down fit. Um, but where I had a couple of issues was, number one, in the heel. I had a little bit of heel slippage, um, and which is surprising with the, um, you have kind of a little cup that you stick in, you can actually get your heel into. Um, so I don't know, maybe I, I just need to figure out the fit a little bit more and how you lock it down. Um, but I did find that I had a little bit of heel slippage. Um, and then the other thing that I would say um, was in the toe box is that I actually usually love room in the toe box. Um, but this actually for me felt like it was a little too much room. Um, and so they're kind of touting this as the long run possible racer. Um, so I've seen a couple different things where this is a racer and then I've seen some things where this is a walker long run shoe. So not really sure exactly who they're, who they're uh, going after with this shoe. Um, but I found that if it is a racer, it's going to be a little sloppy for a racer. Now you're talking about recovery days, easy day runs. Um, I think as your foot swells and you know, as you're, you know, you don't really need something or want something that's going to be super tight across your foot. Um, I think it'll be just fine. All right. So let's move to the midsole. Now, uh, MBT is using a just a simple uh, EVA midsole, um, and so uh, the midsole itself uh, is it's a pretty standard foam, right? So it's not any kind of uh, super critical foam or super bouncy. So I didn't find that it was super cush. Um, it wasn't super responsive either, um, and so I think really for them. Uh, where they really try to make things work is with their rocker. So they have a very, ex, uh, very accentuated rocker. Um, and as with most rockers nowadays, they kind of start usually toward the midfoot and, and kind of curve up. This actually starts closer to the heel. Um, and so I found it really, really weird when I first uh, put it on um, because it really keeps you up on your toes when you're running. Now, um, from you know, kind of doing some research on the shoe and looking at you know the website and looking on some different videos that they posted, like on YouTube. Really, what they're touting for this shoe is that you are they're 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 expecting people wearing this shoe are going to be striking on their heel, and so it's it's meant to strike on the heel and get really quick through the the running cycle over to your toe, and so. 
Uh, for me, I tend to be a midfoot striker and try to stay, you know, landing directly underneath my body, try not to overstride too much. Um, and so for me, it was extremely weird because I was literally landing in front of where the rocker was. And so what I felt like as I was constantly on the lean. And so I felt a lot of pressure on my quad. Um, the first time I ran, I actually felt a little bit of pressure on my knee as well, and I did not like that at all. Um, and so I think that if you are a, uh, if you're definitely an overstrider, if you're a hill striker, I think the foam, the midsole for this um, is really going to be, you know, something that maybe you may consider because it's really going to help you with your mechanics. Now, I think that's kind of the point is number one, um, with this really drastic rocker, the point is supposed to take some of the pressure off of your Achilles, right? So the more pressure, the more less work your Achilles has to do, oh, that, that lessens fatigue, right? Um, and so uh, with that heel strike, uh, with that mid, you know, rotating into that midfoot and then coming forward, um, that rocker is really meant to like limit that ankle movement. Um, so I did feel that. I tried a couple times to run on my heels um, to see if that maybe that felt a little better, a little more natural, um, and it actually did. But for me, it messes up my mechanics because you know that's not how I want to run, right? So I'm a big proponent of fixing your run form um, through drills and things of that nature rather than trying to use technology to do it. Um, but you know that takes a lot longer. Um, so this could be a tool that you could utilize. Maybe if you're, you know, you overstride a lot, or maybe you're not even worried about trying to fix your form. You just want to be able to run and run the way you run. Um, and if you happen to be an overstrider or a hill striker, this could be something that maybe could could really help. All right, so it's got plenty of stack height. So as you can tell, it is definitely on the more maximal side of things. Uh, with a 37 millimeter stack height in the heel and 26 millimeter stack height in the forefoot, gives us an 11 millimeter drop. Um, so it's definitely meant for those longer runs, those bigger miles that you're going to be putting on. Um, now, uh, with the foam and with this upper, what I found is this shoe is pretty heavy, okay? So um, it comes in at about 13 ounces for a size 10-ish or so. Um, so that's pretty heavy um, for a shoe that you're going to be putting a lot of miles on. Um, so, But I will say, um, and we'll get that when we talk about the outsole, I think you're going to probably get a lot of wear out of this shoe. All right, so moving to the outsole. So as you can tell, it has a ton of rubber. This thing is completely covered uh, with rubber. Uh, I've ran in this in, uh, you know, on dry days, on completely wet days. Actually, today we went and ran in the shoe, um, and it was soaked out there and had zero problems with slippage. Um, so it's got a great grip on there. Um, it has this this MIDS traction, this mids traction in here. Um, and this basically makes this shoe with this little uh, track in here and with the, the EVA midsole and the width of this, this shoe, I, it really makes it like a stability shoe. So if you're looking for, you know, if you need more of a stability type thing, maybe you're not a neutral runner, right? Maybe you, you know, kind of over pronate or supinate or what have you, um, and you need that extra stability, this shoe actually is, is that thing. So I think this could be something that, you know, maybe if you're slower or maybe you're not trying to break any kind of speed records, but you're looking for, you know, a, a good shoe that will get you a lot of miles, um, that has a little bit, that has quite a bit of stability to it, this could be that shoe for you. All right, guys, so you heard my thoughts on the shoe. Let's talk to the man, Chris. This gentleman has about 60, 60 or so miles in the shoe, so he's been wearing it with me as well. Um, so I wanted to get his take on the shoe. So Chris, tell us, right, we just did some speed work, 2K yep. repeats, right? So tell us, you know, you ran slow, you ran fast, you ran on the treadmill. What, what, what are kind of some of your initial thoughts um, and then your overall, you know, perspective of the shoe. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a unique shoe. Um, yeah. I mean, the rocker is definitely meant to, if you're trying to fight a heel strike, it is not going to let you heel strike. I yeah. mean, even if you do it, it automatically forces you forward. It'll sit you right off of your heels. Um, nice thing about that, it takes a lot of strain off of your Achilles. So if you're rotating through shoes or such, definitely will help us share the load, uh, help you stay fresh on your feet. Um, but it's definitely a unique shoe. You have to get used to it. Yeah. Um, and it definitely has an application. It's not, I'll, I'll take it and I'll run it on anything type of shoe. Sure. So the rocker itself, right? So rockers are a big thing now. A lot of race shoes, you know, even trainers um, will have a rocker on it. Um, but usually that rocker is kind of right at the ball of your foot, right? Yep. And it's meant to kind of, if you're, whether you're a heel striker or a midfoot striker, it really is just to help you through the transition to, you had mentioned, uh, limit the, uh, the wear and tear on your Achilles, right? right? So the less wear your ankles have, then the less fatigue your body ends up having for the longer distances. So this rocker actually starts kind of toward the heel a bit, right? So right after the heel. So it does almost like really keep you from heel striking, I feel like. Yeah. Um, so it's a very weird sensation though. Yes. Very weird sensation. So it, it keeps you not on your midfoot, but really on your toes, right? Yeah. Um, so what about some other things? What are some things you like, maybe dislike? What, what about the shoe do you like? Um, what I liked about it is um, like this has become one of my road shoes. Mm -hmm. And with me, I'm trying to be an athlete and a daddy. 
So okay. I do my uh, my medium and long runs with my kids in the stroller. And what I definitely noticed on the first couple runs was that um, it definitely, as I got tired, where I probably got more prone in the past to heel striking, it definitely stopped me on that. It would make me more cognizant of it, keep me back on my ball and my foot. Um, and then because of that, um, I would definitely feel less fatigued the next day. I wasn't as sore from pushing that heavy load, which was nice. Um, but on the other side, it is definitely a heavy shoe um, in terms of that. You can definitely, like I can feel it when I'm running um, where it's heavy and my feet feel heavy, but I'm not tired, okay. which is a different feeling. Typically, you, know, you start to say that word, my feet start feeling heavy, they feel like a block of cement, which is not quite as bad as this. Um, you definitely are, are putting that with fatigue, whereas this is more like you just know you're wearing a heavier shoe than normal. Okay, so, you know, it's a heavy shoe, obviously. Um, it does help keep you forward. So, who would you say this shoe, who would you say this shoe is for? Um, definitely, if you are somebody who is trying to change their mechanics and they're struggling with heel striking, this is definitely a shoe for you to take a look at because it's going, like I said, it's going to force you on your forward foot mm -hmm. and make that more um, natural. If you're someone who has been really, like I said, working on your form, but you tend to get, you're getting used to longer running, this will help you maintain the mechanics because the moment you get out of focus mm -hmm. or you may put too much hip hinge or something, between the weight and the rocker, it yeah. gets you back on track because now you're getting that mental cue. Right. So it auto corrects yeah. for you. It, auto, right. it makes you auto correct because you feel really uncomfortable the moment you get out of sync. Right. Um, and then this may sound odd, but I um, I had a chance to by accident take it on the treadmill, mm -hmm. and this is probably my the favorite treadmill shoe I've had. I mean I've done two eight mile runs and I'm not winded, I'm not sore, I'm not tempted to go and buy the grab the rail because I'm trying to hold a pace. It's just nice and natural. I don't, like I said, it feels pretty good. The biggest downside, number one, is the weight. 13 ounces for a shoe is, is really heavy. Whether it's a daily trainer or a long run, I have several shoes, shoes that you know are meant to put miles on, right? 20, 25 mile long runs um, that weigh three or four ounces lighter than the shoe. So that's, to me, that's a big deal, okay? Because the heavier the shoe, the longer the miles, the more that's gonna add up. Um, the next negative I would say for the shoe is that rocker, right? And usually I love the rocker, but this particular rocker for me is a little, it starts too soon. So because I'm not a heel striker, because I try to avoid that, I try not to overstride, to me it just really keeps me up on my toes. And I don't want to be on my toes, I want to try to be on my midfoot because I want to be trying. And it really doesn't matter if you're landing on your heel or your toe or your midfoot, it matters where you're landing in proportion to your body. But for me, I usually tend to land on the midfoot to land under my center of mass. Um, so it, it just felt really uncomfortable um, and I felt like it put a lot of pressure on my quads and my quads really kind of overworked. Um, and then the last thing I would say um, would be that, that heel cup, right? So I do have slippage in there um, and so I could not get my heel to not move whatsoever. This upper is, is stout, okay? And that's probably one of the best things about this shoe is this shoe will probably get you a thousand miles. There's an insert inside that actually is pretty nice. That actually is, has a lot of stability, or not stability, but a lot of cushion to it. Um, and so I think that really helps with that EVA midsole. Um, but, uh, you know, I think this shoe right here, if you're looking for a shoe that's gonna put some miles on, this shoe will give you the miles upon miles upon miles. It was, it's very well made. They've, they put a lot of work into this shoe. And it looks like they, and it, I honestly think they put a lot of thought into it. So I just think they might need to test it a little bit more um, and you know work on, like if they're trying to get into the race market, I think that's kind of where the thing is, is they can't figure, they, they haven't really figured out, is this a racing shoe or is this like a, an easy run shoe? Is it a mix between the two? Um, and with that plate that's in there, you see how it's a really stiff shoe, right? And I think it's stiff and they've got that on purpose because of the rocker, right? So it's to limit that ankle movement. Um, and so I, I think they put a lot of thought into it and probably a lot of research as well. Um, but like the application of it for like someone like me, um, it's just not something I would w want to wear on a regular basis. So, you know, for $180 um, or two, from $180 to $200, to me, there's a lot of shoes out there um, that I enjoy running in. Um, and I'm not feeling like, you know what, uh, I hope this runs over with. So, you know, I don't hate the shoe, um, but I do say that, you know, MBT, I think you guys have a lot of work to do. Um, if you're going to be able to truly compete um, with some of those other big boys that are out there. But I think you have a good base to start with. All right, guys, that is it. Thanks for coming in today, guys. I hope you learned something. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, make sure if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up. And as always, remember that when you change your mind, you can change your life. Big thanks to Chris Wheeler for coming out and supporting us today, uh, for giving us a chance to try out this shoe. Thanks for MBT for trusting us enough to try your shoe out and letting us be honest about it. So you guys are great. Thanks for coming in. Be amazing. Do something great this week, and we'll see you next week.